An important part of our discussion about working with the different API levels is the Android SDK Manager. The Android SDK Manager manages kind of everything to do with your SDK installations in your development environment. So it's responsible for installing the latest platform and capabilities, updating things as they change, uh, removing things you don't want anymore. So, and it really is core to everything we do as Android developers because all your tools are going to be managed by it. That's things like ADB and DDMS. The SDKs themselves for each level, right? So that's going to be things like the actual uh, platform, like, you know, API level 17 platform, as well as sample code. And there's even extras that's managed by that. And that would be things like the Google Play services, or if you wanted to put ads inside of your application, the ad API is managed through the SDK manager. So just about everything that we deal with as Android developers is managed by the SDK manager. Now, the one exception to that is the actual IDEs we use. So you have Eclipse, and now we have the Android Studio. Now, Eclipse is not managed by the SDK manager. If you want to move to a new version of Eclipse, it's your responsibility to deal with it. So the SDK manager doesn't even think about Eclipse. Now, the question on and you know, Android Studio is a question. Um, as I'm recording this video, Android Studio was announced literally just two days ago. So it's on version 0 0.1. So it's not really clear whether the SDK manager is going to manage updates to that or not. Um, my belief is that it probably will, or at least some kind of automated environment will update Android Studio because it's based on uh, JetBrains IntelliJ IDE. And I know that, that JetBrains IntelliJ IDE has built-in updating inside that environment. So I would expect that Android Studio would have that as well. But again, that's not really been clearly announced. So just kind of watch the documentation to see how the SDK manager, or at least how updates apply to the Android Studio. Although the SDK manager takes care of doing your updates for you, it doesn't do it automatically. You're responsible to periodically run the SDK manager and check and see if there are any updates to apply. Obvious scenarios would be that when a new API level comes out or you want to install a new API level, you would go to the SDK manager. But also the tools periodically update. So you want to make sure you just run that every once in a while and see if there are any updates you need to apply. So let's look at using the SDK manager. So I'm here inside of Eclipse. What we're going to do is we're going to look for this icon, the Android SDK manager. If you're inside of Android Studio, it's the same icon. Go ahead and click on that. And so if we take a look at what's inside of here, you'll see that here's the tools, right? And you'll notice that on the tools, I currently have uh, revision 21.1 installed. It wants me to have revision 22. Now, one thing that can be confusing is that these revision numbers here have nothing to do with API levels. It's just a separate numbering system for the tools. In general, you're always going to want to have the same tools. The way the SDK manager works is that when you launch it, It'll actually go out and check and see whether you have the current tools. So in my case, I didn't check this box. This box was all already checked because the SDK manager saw that I was one revision behind. Now, if I want to install a new API level, so say, for example, that I want to support down to Android 2.1, right down to API 7, right? You notice if I expand this, I don't have anything inside of here. Now, if you want to, you can just go ahead and check the top level box here. And that'll give you everything. That'll give you the SDK platform. In other words, the ability to compile and build for that environment. Or I should say for that API level. You see there's some sample codes in there. And you have the Google APIs. That's some extended APIs you can use. If you've got the room, in general, I tell you, I encourage you to go and just check the top level box. Because one of the other things you get is that with some releases, you also get new emulator images that are updated to actually work with that level. So if you have the room, I encourage you to go and just click click the top level box. If you're really pressed for space, in most cases, you can get, a, get away with just checking the SDK platform itself. And if there are any emulators, go ahead and check those. All right, so that's our API levels or our platform levels. And if I go all the way down here, there's this extra section. And that's things like, as I mentioned, that they're not part of uh, Android specifically, but extended things you can use, like the ad mob is the API for including advertisements in your applications the cloud messaging library for sending messages to devices, Google Play services. It's a whole family of services that allow you to uh, do some kind of really cool stuff in terms of uh, communication and location and some other stuff. But all this is managed through the SDK manager. Now, just a quick thing on how the UI itself works is that if you check one that's not installed, 
If you watch, as I check that, you'll notice that the install package here says 2. If I check on one here that's not installed, you notice that goes up to 3. Right now, if I take it back down to 2. If I check on one that is installed, you notice that delete, right now it says delete 1 packages. If I check on the one that's installed, you see delete jumps up to 2. Right? So basically, it's a little bit of a confusing API because you use the same kind of checkboxes for installation or deletion. It just depends on which button you click, uh, which causes that action. If I go to the install two packages, just a quick thing here, is that um, the way it's set up is you have to accept your licenses. So you can actually go by and accept each license one by one, or if you take the top level of the group, you can just click accept license, and then it'll go ahead and do the install. Right? So, but the key thing you want to remember here is that you do want to run this periodically uh, to make sure your tools stay up to date, because it will check for you once you launch it. And this is the way you add additional API levels to your development environment.